I want us to continue in our study in Psalm 25, and uh, our text is verse 20 this week. O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. And uh, the section that we're in is, is verses 15 to 21 are basically a prayer of deliverance from all his troubles. Um, we're coming at the end of this uh, series. There's just two more verses after this. And um, I have a couple of things I've been thinking about preaching on. I've been thinking about uh, preaching on the book of Ruth. And I've uh, been also thinking about preaching on spiritual gifts. But maybe uh, there's something you might want me to preach on. I, you can tell me. I might not do it, but I, I, I might not feel like God, that's what God wants, but uh, it might be something God wants. So if there's a, a subject or a topic that you uh, are interested in, let me know and I'll pray about it and we'll see if God wants me to preach on it. But anyways, regardless, pray that God would lead me what to preach on next. Now, this psalm is, is uh, there's something special about this psalm. And there's seven other psalms in the Bible that are like that. What is special about this psalm? I'm sorry? Alphabetical. It's alphabetical. So <clears throat> there's seven psalms. So we've got this psalm. Alphabetical, that means the, the first start letter starts with Aleph, uh, the first letter in, in, in Hebrew, and it works through. It's like it, it would be in English, everything, the first verse would start with A, the next verse would start with B, the next verse would start with C. Now it's not completely like that in this psalm, but, but it is. So what are the other ones? Does anybody remember? Well, we all know one's one. What one is alphabetical? What's the longest psalm in the Bible? 119. And in that case, each set of verses start with a letter. So we've got Psalm 37, Psalm 112, Psalm 25, Psalm 119, and those, oh, Psalm 111, and Psalm 145. Uh, so Psalm 34, 37, 111, 112, 119, and 145. Now, <clears throat> the Bible says, Every word of God is preserved. And that's really important. You know, there's people saying, well, the word of God is not preserved, just the thoughts of God. No, the word of God. People say the message. Well, message is made up of words. Every word is important in the Bible. And when we look at this psalm in verse 20, it just starts off with a simple word, a letter. Uh, one, one letter word, O. Oh, I mean, it's not even O-H, it's just O. A simple one-letter word. Or is it simple? That's the question. Uh, I've talked about this before, but when I was in secondary school, I took biology. Who took biology? Who didn't take biology? Oh, I thought everybody interested in biology. I did not take chemistry. That didn't interest me. I took biology, and uh, they constantly refer to the sim simple one-celled animal. Now, I don't know if a biologist, scientist would have called it simple, but they, they, in secondary school at that time, they told us it was a simple one-celled animal. But turns out, after doing lots of research, it's a very complex animal. Let me read you this. While the term simple is relative and can be used in various contexts, Referring to a one-celled animal as simple may be misleading. These single-celled organisms, also known as unicellular organisms, can be quite complex in their own right, especially when considering their biological functions, structures, and the processes they carry out. For example, amoebas are unicellular organisms that move, feed, and reproduce all within a single cell. They exhibit complex behaviors such as responding to their environments and they have various organelles uh, that perform specific functions such as nucleus which contains their genetic material. It is essential to recognize that simplicity or complexity is often a matter of perspective. Even though these organisms consist of only one cell, 
they can be incredibly fascinating and intricate in terms of their biological processes and adaptations to their environments. There's no such thing as a simple one-celled animal. And there's no such thing as a simple word in the Bible. They're important. And uh, I, I like what it said, is it's essential to recognize that the simplicity or complexity is often a matter of perspective. Sometimes I think I skip over small words and I don't think about them that, as much. Uh, and so, without looking, how many times is this word O oh, in this psalm? There are three or four times. Okay, we've we've been covered it. We've covered it, and somebody says three or four. Anybody else? Nine times. That's important, isn't it? There are a uh, hundred and sixty words in this chapter, and nine times the word "o" oh shows up. You know what that is? That's five point six two percent of the words. There's 22 verses, and the word O appears nine times. That's in 40% of the verses, O appears. I think it might be important. I don't think it's a simple word. It's an important word. Uh, I didn't realize how, how important it was until I started thinking about it and, and studying it out. Uh, and we're often uh, tempted to... Uh, to, to, to gloss over these simple words, aren't we? But they're not simple, they're important. And uh, there's only one word in this psalm that appears more often than the word O. Oh. Anybody want to tell me what it is? Lord, very good, excellent. I wouldn't have been able to say that without looking. I'd have to th have thought about it, but it's Lord. So let's look at the uh, times that O oh is mentioned. Psalm 25, verse 1. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Verse 2. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Verse 4. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Verse 6. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Verse 7. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor the transgressions according to thy tender mercy, Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Uh, verse 11. <coughs> Excuse me. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Verse 17. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O bring thou me out of my distress. And then our text verse. O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. And then the last verse again. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. That's quite interesting that how often uh, the word O oh is, isn't it? And um, let me give you um, the Oxford definition. An exclamation used in calling directly or directly addressing a person. So it's an exclamation or it's an emotional or impassionate exclamation expressing Pain, grief, surprise, desire, fear. So it's often uh, used in, in expressing uh, exclamation. It, it's showing deep emotion. It's showing deep emotion. So uh, this uh, prayer that he's praying, it's deeply from within his heart. He's saying, oh God, oh Lord, oh keep me. You know, it's from deep within his heart. And, and so that's a really important word that, that God is showing us. This really matters. <clears throat> so uh, this word, O, oh, helps us to see the, the depth uh, uh, of this prayer. It's from the depths of his heart, David is crying to, to God. And, and then he says, O, oh, keep my soul. To keep is to protect. He, he wants protection from his enemies in verse 2. Oh my God, 
Again, see that? Oh, he's crying out to God. God, I trust thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. From his, from his heart, he's crying, God, keep me. Keep me, Lord, from my enemies. He's trusting God to protect him. Not trusting in men. Good to see you. Uh, verse 20, uh, chapter Psalm 20, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. He is trusting in God to protect them. And you know, sometimes we, we, uh, we trust in our bank account, or we trust in our, our, in our abilities, or we trust in our, 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 our family and our friends, but God wants us to trust in Him. And so he's, he's praying to God to keep him from his enemies, but he's even praying to God to keep him from his sins. If you remember uh, in this psalm twice, he, uh, he's uh, talking to God. He says uh, about his sin. Uh, he, he tells God, uh, don't remember the sins of my youth. And then he says in verse 18, look on my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. He's praying to God Keep me from sin. So he says uh, in, in Psalm 19, verse 13, Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be upright, and I shall be innocent from great transgressions. You know, we need to pray, God, keep me from sin. We are all capable of doing the most horrendous sins. And every sin is horrendous to God, okay? God hates what sin? All sin. Get that in your heart. Uh, we sometimes think, well, I'm doing this. It's not that bad. It is that bad. Sin is wicked. All sin is wicked. And he says, he's praying, God, keep me. And uh, we need to pray, God, keep me from sin. Lord, I am capable. I, I, my heart, Lord, I still have a heart of uh, a flesh and, and it wants to lead me astray. God, keep me. And plead with God. And this is, this is his heart. He said, oh, that, and that means it's an expression. That it's from deep within his heart. God, keep me. Let me read you a quote. This is from Spurgeon. This earnest and humble prayer teaches us that saints may fall into the worst of sins unless restrained by grace. And that therefore they must watch and pray lest they enter into temptation. There is a natural proneness to sin in the best of men. They must be held back as a horse is held back by a bit, or they will run into it. David doesn't want to be destroyed by his enemies, and David doesn't want to be destroyed by his own sin. Amen? I don't want to be destroyed by others, and I don't want to destroy myself. God, you protect me. And this <clears throat> is the prayer of faith, because he's not trusting in himself, he is trusting in God. God, you are greater than my enemies. God, you are greater than me. Keep me, Lord. Protect me. Let me read you this quote. God is the keeper of his people in a spiritual sense. They cannot keep themselves from sin, Satan and the world. But he is able to keep them from falling. Therefore, they pray to him that he would keep them. And they have reason to believe that they shall be kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Then he says, keep Oh, keep my soul. He's talking about his whole person. Keep me from physical sins. Keep me from spiritual sins. Lord, keep me. Protect my whole being, Lord. And this is what only God can do that. Jude says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Who can keep me from falling? God can. But I need to pray. God, keep me from sin. Keep me, Lord. Protect me. I am capable. Understand that you are capable. And if, and, and if it's not because you're such a good person, it's, we have such a great God. And, and trust that God would keep you. It's only God can do it. Lord, I cannot do it. Lord, I, I am a man. And I have a wicked heart. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But God is able to keep me. Amen? Amen. And He will. You know, the, the disciples' prayer, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. That We need to be praying this. This is, <coughs> this is in the Bible for a reason, that we may learn 
to pray and God keep me from evil keep me from Lord having a a, 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 a a sharp tongue that hurts people. Lord, keep me uh, from looking at things that I shouldn't be looking at. Lord, keep my mind from, from thoughts that I shouldn't be thinking. God, keep me. And then he says, and deliver me. Psalm 25, verse 20, Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. And is a, a uh, what in, in English language, what, what word is that and? Connecting. Connecting word. It's a conjunction and it connects things. And so he doesn't want to just be kept. He wants both to be kept and delivered. To kept, be kept is to protect from. Delivered is to be saved from or rescued. So he's, he's look, looking to be kept from sin and his enemies, but he's also looking to be rescued, to be set at liberty, to be free from captivity. Now, he didn't say... Uh, what he wanted to be delivered from. He said, keep my soul, but he didn't say what to deliver from. You know what he's, he wants deliverance from? What does he want deliverance from? With the sin. S sin? Starts with E, and the next word is v. is v. E, V, E, R, Y, everything. everything. That's it. He wants deliverance from everything. Amen? All that you said is right. He wants deliverance, but he wants deliverance from everything. He wants to be uh, delivered from his enemies. Uh, remember in verse 2, Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over He He wants to be delivered. In Psalm 22, uh, verse 20, Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. He wants to be delivered from his sins. He wants to be freed. He doesn't want to just uh, not sin. He wants to be delivered from them. Amen? He doesn't want them to have victory over his life. He wants to be delivered from the world and the power of the world and the pull of the world because the world has this grip that wants to make us like it. And God says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. He says, God, deliver me from this world. Understand, this world it wants you to be like it. The world wants you to think like the world. The, the world wants you to act like the world. The world wants you to dress like the world. He wants to be delivered from his afflictions. Uh, uh, I forget what verse, I forgot to, to write it down, but um, he talks about his afflictions in this uh, somewhere. I can't remember where it is, but, uh, oh yeah, verse 18. Look on mine affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. He wants to be delivered from his affliction. Uh, uh, sickness and pain. He wants to be delivered. Amen. Mm -hmm. he, he, he wants to be delivered from Satan. And, and, and So uh, he's trusting in God. And notice, this is a very personal verse. He says, Oh, keep my soul and deliver who? Me. Look at this verse, how, how, how personal it is. Oh, keep... My soul, that's personal, isn't it? And deliver who? Me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Four times in this verse, he makes it very personal. And my prayer, uh, you know, uh, for, for, for uh, my spiritual being is a very personal thing. I pray, God, you help me be a godly husband. God, help me to be a godly father. God, help me to be a godly pastor. Lord, help me. In these spiritual things, I, it, it's very personal. And <clears throat> so that's <clears throat> what he wants. He wants God. And then he says, uh, Oh, keep my soul in delivery. Let me not be ashamed. As I said before, we do not do vain repetition where we say the thing over and over and over again. But a heartfelt prayer often repeats itself. Look at verse 2. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. And then in verse 20 he says, Oh, my so oh, keep, oh keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. He's, he said the same thing again, didn't he? Twice in, the, in this psalm. Let me not be ashamed. It's a prayer. But it's a prayer from the heart. Remember, what's the word? How do we know that it's from the heart? Oh, that's an exclamation from the, the heart. Oh, God. And so when we're praying, sometimes we, we repeat ourselves. It's not like we're saying the same thing over and over again. It's my heart. And so 
We don't have to be concerned. That, that, oh, I said that already in my prayer. When you're really crying from your heart, sometimes you have to repeat yourself. But it's not the idea of, of saying the same thing over and over and over again. You understand the difference? The difference is, is, is if it's from my heart. And he says, let me not be ashamed. Let, Lord, don't, me, don't let me be ashamed of being a Christian. Don't let me be ashamed uh, of standing for you, God. Let, don't let me be ashamed that I, I put you first. Don't let me be ashamed of your name, Lord. Uh, <clears throat> Psalm 119, verse 6. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. You know what he wants? He wants to be able to stand so that his, he, 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 he's a testimony for God. And doesn't want to be ashamed of, of his life. You know, you know when we, when we uh, sin, we bring disgrace to God. And, and, and he doesn't want to be ashamed. He wants to be delivered and he wants to be kept. He doesn't want to be ashamed. Uh, Isaiah 50 verse 7 says, For the Lord thy God will help me. Therefore, I shall not be counterfeited. Therefore, shall I set my face as a fint, and I know I shall not be ashamed. He's crying unto God, and as he said, I shall not be ashamed. And then he tells us why. For I put my trust in thee. For, uh, what, what does the F-O-R mean in this case? Because. I don't want to be ashamed because... I have put my trust in thee. Once again, it's personal. Who put his trust? I. I. Personally, I have to have that. I have to walk by faith. I can't, I can't have faith for you. You can't have faith for me. It's got to be personal. I put my trust in thee. And what's another word for trust? Faith. That's it. He's put his faith in in God. And that's where we need to. I, 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 a good quote here by Spurgeon. Do you notice how David gets back to the keynote? Almost at the beginning of the psalm, he said, Oh my God, I trust in thee. Verse 2. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. And, and again in verse 20. Oh, my, oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I trust in thee. Thee. He gets back to this uh, <clears throat> trusting in God. And now he says, let my faith in, in God be the keynote. Sorry, let me just start reading again. Do you notice how David gets his eye back on the keynote? Almost at the beginning of the psalm, he said, oh my God, I trust in thee. Now he says, I put my trust in thee. Let faith in God be the keynote of your life. Psalm. At another time, David wrote, trust in the Lord and do good and so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. That is the motto for all Christians. Trust, trust, trust. When there is nothing to be seen, when you are in thick darkness, let Job's confident declaration be the resolve of your heart. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And so David is, is said, for I trust in thee. Remember, this is, this is a psalm where David is going through a lot of things. Remember? Uh, he's got his, uh, he, he's got his enemies. He's got his problems. He's got his health. He's got his afflictions, uh, <clears throat> and uh, he's even a uh, uh, lot of things going on in his life. But what does he do? He trusts in God. He trusts in God. That's where he says, "Well, keep." My soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for my put my trust in Thee. That's where his faith is. His faith is not in himself. His faith is not in his prayers. His faith is in God. God, I need you. God, I need you to keep me. God, I need you to deliver me. God, help me to not be ashamed. I am trusting in Thee. <clears throat> Psalm 56 verse 3 says, What time I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. When I'm in trouble, I trust in God. When I'm in affliction, I trust in God. When I have enemies, I trust 
in God. When I don't know what to do, I trust in God. Psalm 57 verse 1 says, Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refu refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I mean, we're in the midst of calamities, and what do I do? I just keep trusting in him. Amen? Amen? That's what David did. And let me read you uh, Isaiah 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. What a tremendous verse this is. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I might put my trust in thee. Are you praying and asking God to keep you? Are you asking God to, to protect you? And, to, and then, are you asking God to deliver you? Deliver me, Lord, from these sins that, uh, that uh, are so easily done. Lord, deliver me from my, my pride. Deliver me from my envy or jealousy and greed. And Lord, just deliver me. Amen? Deliver me, God. Let me not be ashamed. Let me have a testimony that will bring you honor and glory. I, I don't want to be ashamed. Why? Because I put my trust in you, God. What a tremendous prayer of faith. From his heart, he's cried unto God. And I hope uh, this uh, verse might help you in your prayer life to be just trusting in God. Let's close in a word of prayer.